Did you notice our ultra trick steel clutch bolts there? Yes. Extra weight. <laughs> it's because otherwise, <laughs> otherwise the gas gets leak. I when I uh, when I rebuild these because the the BMW comes with all aluminum bolts. I re, like that one over there. I replace them with steel bolts. We've had in Moto America. You have to. Um, we took the clutch out. Um, so. Uh, as you said, like this is the only clutch you ran all year. It's definitely that's the only clutch we ran for four thousand race models. Right. So, which is great. <laughs> so it's dark, but it's not burnt. It pro it wasn't really putting any deposits in the oil, but it is gonna. It was gonna get replaced regardless. But this is this is where you want to get it before it gets really bad and really starts potentially causing problems. So we we got it at just about like we know we can go four thousand miles safely. So. Which is, which quite honestly, from my perspective, is insane that you yes. can run 4,000 miles yep. of race, race and I miles. Think, and I think a lot of that has to do with how well the, uh, the race electronics, the quick shifter and auto blip work with the style of clutch that's in this. You could put a different clutch in that slips more, but it's going to put more wear and tear on the clutch. Tell me about the oil pan. So one of the uh, issues you guys said you had was a transmission issue and then looking inside here There's really not a lot of debris, but there are a couple little slivers and those are going to be when you get these long steel slivers The only place that can come from is the transmission So that is probably from the third gear one of the third gear engagement dogs most of this probably came out with oil changes um, oil changes <laughs> Uh, some bikes have magnetic drain plugs that so you would have maybe caught it in there, but the, where this little trough is, is, is actually under where the oil comes out. So there's usually some little pieces of metal in there. Um, you're always going to find some, it's not the motor breaking in or anything like metal only comes from contact that it shouldn't be having. really low RPM, high load stuff. A um, lot of launches and taking off, uh, but still, you know, no, no heavy streaking or debris marks or anything like that. So really good oil changes, lots of oil changes, uh, not burning up any clutches helps with all that. Cause inline forwards, you can run pretty lightweight oil. I do, I did, when we raced the Aprilia's, we learned real fast, like you had to have thick oil in there. So anytime I do twin stuff, 2050 oil, like thicker weight oil, um, is when I generally have seen issues like that. We also found out that zero weight oil, although it may be fine with, with rods and main bearings and stuff like that. So not good on transmissions. Trans Assembled crank is out. We've taken the output shaft of the transmission out. This is where uh, we, they were having shifting problems, particularly third gear. <clears throat> On the output shaft, you got one, two, three, four, five, six. So we take first gear out, the slider gear that makes third gear work, and then that's where we see the first spot of wear. And the, these engagement dogs that are be square, they're now round, which is why it's jumping out of gear. <clears throat> And it's hard to see with a camera, but when you kind of peek in there, you can see the same things happening in uh, third and fourth gear also. Now, when you have a transmission like this, the next thing we do is we look at the transmission shift forks. And if you look right here, you can see these dark marks. Those aren't supposed to be there. That is happening because the bike is in gear and these are where they're supposed to be. But when that thing, every time that gear jumps out, it's pushing on this shift fork which is creating all these burn marks and will eventually wear this thing down. So as the gear wears and the shift fork wears, you get more and more play, which is why the problem gets worse as you go through, you know, more shifts, more shifts uh, jumping out, causes more damage, causes more play, causes more severe shifts jumping out. All right, so this is the crankshaft out of this R1, um, called the cross plane crank. That's why the R1 has such a specific tone compared to all your other inline fours. Um, 
Uh, a standard inline four has two pistons going up and two pistons going down at the same time, opposing pistons, but, but with an even firing order. So as it rotates, um, there's combustion cycle or the spark plug going off uh, every 180 degrees. What makes this thing sound like a, like a V6 or a V8 car is because it is half of a crank from a V8 car. There's five main journals. They're all in line, uh, centered. That's what the crank rotates on inside the cases. Uh, <clears throat> these are your rod journals. So they are would normally be like one here, one way over here. These ones fire 90 degrees apart. So you have one here, one here, and then you go to this one, which is the next 90 degree phase, and then to this one. So you get four firing uh, bursts all within a very quick amount of time and then a large overlap of nothing happening. So you get a large burst of power, which is why these bikes make a lot of torque. Really good for getting off corners. Um, and they're just now figuring out how to make them rev higher and still have a lot of RPM and uh, peak horsepower compared to a standard uh, inline four. You have your uh, primary gear. So this rides against the clutch basket. <clears throat> That's what drives the power of the crank into the trans uh, clutch basket and then eventually into the transmission. So this is the balance shaft. Whenever you have a, most inline fours have a small balance shaft, but because this is a pro cross plane, it needs a much larger uh, shaft to counteract the vibrations of a, an asymmetrical crank. Um, and then this little last gear right here, this is what runs a timing chain. So that chain goes up to the cams and rotates the cams um, in the order that the crank's spinning. And uh, if we were being all pro with this, there'd be magna fluxing and well, yeah, there's plastic a lot. gauging and all this, but yep. from your visual inspection, how's the crank look after 4,000 race miles? It looks excellent. The bearings are in great condition. There's, you know, there's always going to be some light wear marks, but there's no heavy scoring. There's no gouges. There's no heat, um, which is when you know something is getting ready to be really bad. Um, once we clean up all the oil, we'll do a, a more... Uh, intense visual inspection. Um, because this is just a pretty basic build, we're not like, we don't need to worry about magna fluxing. There's no potential damage to the crank or anything like that. And then the plastic gauge part is going to be when it's reassembled. Plastic gauge is how you measure down into the one to two thousandths range, which is about the thickness of a piece of paper. Uh, to get your proper oil clearances to uh, because of the dimensioning differences in manufacturing. Aww. It's got separate cylinders. It does. How retro. <clears throat> so this is your shift drum. So when you, uh, actually let's go back, back a step. So when you move your shift lever, you're rotating this, which is a shift shaft. That, because it just rotates, uh, before you know, front to back. This will uh, <clears throat> go into here, rotate, rotate this clip, this piece. This is your shift drum. These little channels are what the shift, uh, shift fork rods on. So that's when it's not being moved, but then when it goes into a gear, it's sliding the fork in or out to engage, uh, engage and disengage gears at the same time. So as one is going out of the gear, the one that it was previously in is getting pulled out of gear. So when we had the amount of damage on the gears that we had and we had this damage on the fork, we're looking at this pivot point. So this uh, round dowelish piece rides through this channel. We also have to look at the contact point of these two pieces because when there's this much damage here, this is where the root of it is. So you also have to look at the wear that's in the drum because we could replace this and replace the gears, but if that's worn, we're still gonna have a shifting problem. These generally don't see as much damage, um, but uh, there is a little bit of wear. You know, you can see a little tiny spots right here. That's what this looked like a long time ago. 
So to uh, restate it, once you lose your undercut on your transmission, the gears are trying to get forced out of gear get, the, by the, the engine. Right, they're getting kicked the, out. They're getting forced away, but the forks are staying where they are because they're locked into place because of where they are on the shift drum. But so that's, that's where, not their job. No, their job is to move it and just hold it there. It's not there to do anything else. So all the damage here is because that gear keeps trying to push itself out of its way is burning up the oil, the slight, the light oil film that's on here. And that's why there's, there's burn marks in here and you'll see, you'll start seeing some dark heat stuff. Excellent. These still look really good compared to some I've seen, some I've seen where they're half this thickness and it, it was jumping out of gear for a long time. Mike, this has been so helpful. It was great working with you today. It's a pleasure to watch a professional uh, do this as opposed to us hacks doing it in a driveway somewhere. Um, so what do you think we should do with this motor for what we're doing with it? Uh, well, specifically because it's an endurance uh, motor that's not gonna get taken apart every weekend. It needs to last the whole season. And we're not really sure how long that season is gonna be yet. <laughs> um, endurance isn't about making horsepower. It's about reliability and consistency. So, we are not going to try to overbuild this motor. We don't need the fastest bike. You don't need the fastest bike. You carry a ton of fuel. You, you got to make this thing work for a bunch of different riders and, and be a very broad uh, spec of a motor. We're not trying to go win sprint races that are six laps wrong with fresh tires. You need old tires and lots of fuel and all these things. So like it's, it's about keeping it reliable. We're going to like this engine stock makes over 200 horsepower. Uh, most people, if not almost all people, do not need more than that. If anything, you're going to take power away. Um, so we're going to leave it as stock as possible. We're going to improve a couple areas, maybe get a little, a little friction inside, but that just helps with longevity of the motor, but we're going to keep the compression the same. We're not going to uh, do anything to head, do anything cams. It's a very smooth power delivery now, so we don't need to worry about changing cam timing. We don't need to add horsepower, one that'll give you a uh, little higher fuel usage, which we get, you got this giant tank on the bike, but we still need to make it last as long as you can. So we don't need to have any more fuel usage. Um, more compression is harder on the motor, harder on the bearings, harder on pistons and stuff. So we're, we're not gonna take any power away. We're just gonna get this thing back to like brand new freshness, the way it came out of the, came from the factory. So we're gonna, uh, the normal wear and tear parts, rings. Those are, besides valves probably and bearings, like those three things are the most abused part of the motor because they're the things that are constantly being moved or doing some sort of function. Sealing, uh, compression, sealing oil, trying to keep things from touching each other. So we're gonna be doing rings. Uh, we're gonna do pistons just because of the mileage of the motor. And what we're gonna go do again is potentially another three to 5,000 miles over the next uh, you know, two years of being a primary motor and then probably being a backup motor for the next season. So new pistons, new rings. Um, the rods are pretty strong. They're, they're good for probably two, one or two more uh, build cycles. Um, you gotta do the rod bolts. Uh, they have to be replaced per the manual, no matter what, every time they've been untorqued after they've been used. Particularly so because this bike comes with titanium rods that are stock. Very big no-no to reuse rod bolts. That is the one bolt you do not ever want coming apart or failing because <laughs> uh, it gets really bad really fast. We're gonna put a fresh set of bearings in, rod and main bearings, and on this in this case, a balancer shaft bearing. Um, we're going to, uh, we're going to address this transmission and, and replace all the gears that are damaged, uh, primarily came apart because of that third gear, but the second and fourth gear were not far behind. If that third gear, um, hadn't started being an issue, second and fourth were, were, they were going to start complaining about, uh, either of those gears. And then the matching shift forks, uh, and the shift drum, which got damaged uh, after the gears started having, uh, jumping out of gear issues. Uh, we're going to put a new oil pump in it. Uh, that's kind of just a, um, uh, something we do. We, uh, that when that transmission starts doing what it was doing, those little metal pieces get in there, damage the oil pump. doesn't really lose oil pressure, but like you want that, the oil pump, it has to be pushing fresh oil all the time. You want that thing running as good as you can. Um, new valves, valve springs, and cam chain. Those are kind of like the rings. They're, they're 
they're very heavily abused items. If any one of those parts fail, especially not only is, is it going to take you out of a race, take you out of a weekend, but it, it gets very costly. You lose a, you lose a valve at high RPM, fourth or fifth <laughs> gear at any of these tracks, take the motor out, put it in the ditch. There's nothing going to... You might get the transmission out of it, and that's about it. But not this transmission. Not th well, this. <laughs> this transmission's already toast, but we're going to correct that. Um, but yeah, the, the key to this motor is life. We want as much life at the level that it's ridden at. Um, if this was a, you know, a sprint motor, or, or you really care about that peak horsepower, we could start doing all kinds of things. We could raise compression. We could change cam timing. That would be <clears throat> like a normal super sport, super stock build. Uh, we could. Start really trying to get power, which is put a bigger piston in it or put a bigger cam and importing the head and all these things. They, not only does it really increase the cost, but it does bring the reliability of the motor down. The more you do to the motor, yeah, the faster and stronger it is, but the less time that's going to last. Does um, it hurt you like on a psychological level to just be building like a stock motor? No, because <laughs> like we build so many different types of motors here. I do a lot of road race stuff and then some of it is we're trying to get everything else but like for your normal track day guy we don't go to the limit because they want the motor to last more than a half a season they want it to go two years so we'll do we may be doing valves but maybe we don't put as much compression in it um or or say it has eight or ten thousand miles and we do valves but they don't want to go into the bottom end yet because that doubles the cost of between labor uh, the parts and everything and the time involved like that that'll double the cost of the build so it's all it's all in perspective so like in this case this was required um, because of what you're doing you're you're trying to win a race your goal really is to win a championship so championship has to do with reliability do this once lasts all year um, some guys just want to have the fastest bike. They're track day guys, and they just want to beat their buddy who has the latest, greatest bike, and maybe your bike's a little older. We're going to throw everything at it. And some like, and then we do a lot of other types of racing. We do drag racing and lean speed racing where the most horsepower you can get out of it is the most important thing over anything else. So we're pushing the limits, and sometimes we go past the limit, and it goes kaboom. Um, usually, hopefully that's because of how far we pushed it and no other reason besides that. Uh, sounds good. All right. Well, we'll go order a bunch of parts. Hope the, uh, global supply chain is not, uh, yeah, that's not been the best the last couple of years because of COVID and stuff. Um, and but. then we'll, uh, come back in a couple months and button it up. Yep. All right, brother. Cool. Thanks a lot. Thank you, sir.